The sun has been blocked out, Blade has turned against the superhero community, and seas of vampires are walking the earth. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Blood Hunt issue number two and find out what happens next together, shall we? So then, as we join this second issue, Blade, the new lord and master of vampire kind, is in the impossible city, gloating after his victory with the Avengers. First Mightiest Heroes never saw this betrayal coming, and now several of them are gravely injured, lost, or in the case of Black Panther, Panther turned to the vampire side. While the impossible city, Blade himself has decided to claim as his brand new vampire palace. And I mean, hey, every vampire needs a palace, am I right? But he's not done yet. This is just phase one of a much bigger plan. It would seem that Blade is still looking for something. Well, two somethings to be exact. The second one we know for certain is actually his daughter, Briella, aka Bloodline. Where's Bloodline right now? Well, she's in New York, doing her best to try and fight the good fight against the vampire horde. Here's the surprise thing, though Bloodline isn't alone as she is actually assisted in her journey by Dracula, one of her father's old arch foes. In fact, you could read all about these two's adventures if you had read the tie-in from last week. I didn't, but honestly, I'm kind of interested after checking this out. It seems that all the different street-level heroes in New York have the same idea, and that is that if this is a magical-based vampire problem, they need to go hunt down Doctor Strange. Miles Morales ends up swinging into Tigra and a Hunter's Moon, Actually, Miles and Hunter's Moon have a fun back and forth. Oh, you're the new Moon Knight? I'm the new Spider-Man. Well, I'm the new-er Moon Knight. Technically, another Moon Knight. It's a whole thing. It's a good thing these three hooked up when they did because Miles is forced to admit that he doesn't actually know where the Sanctum Sanctorum is. Oh, he knows it's in Greenwich Village somewhere. <laughs> At first, I actually assumed that was something of a plot hole, but don't worry because it actually ends up making a bunch of sense later. Our ragtag trio ends up making it to the Sanctorum only to realize they're too late, and that Doctor Doctor Strange was killed and vampirized by Blade himself. Don't worry, Steven is still able to help, though, just in his astral form, because when you're the Sorcerer Supreme, not even death and being turned into a vampire can really hold you back for long. Again, if you were interested, there's actually a whole tie-in further explaining how Doctor Strange got to where he is right now, also written by Jed McKay, and only two issues in, I'm getting the sneaking suspicion that those Blood Hunt tie-ins are actually the good slash important ones. Now, in order to retrieve his daughter, Vampire Emperor Blade was sure to dispatch the Blood Coven, his elite Avenger-level vampire henchmen. These guys had royally stomped Earth's Mightiest Heroes in the previous issue, and even though the team has been broken up now, Captain Marvel, Iron Man, and Vision, alongside Sam Wilson, Captain America, managed to swoop on in and make the save for Bloodline. They're obviously out for some good old-fashioned revenge following that sucker-punching they received last issue. And now that they've actually had a chance to see how the Blood Coven fight, they've come up with all sorts of different countermeasures to try and defeat their foes this time around. Starting off hot, Vision uses his computer brain to confuse Smoke Eater, the vampire psychics, before dragging him all the way up into the sky where I think he explodes when he reaches the sun. Well, back on the ground, Iron Man, making use of the incredibly powerful magnets inside of his suit, manages to very easily defeat Reflect all of the razor wire being used against him by the vampire's cruel. It's after that Captain Marvel steps on in, and again, if you know Carol's history, hey, weren't you binary once upon a time? Don't you have access to amazing solar power? On top of all your other powers? Well, yes, yes she does, and with Vision actually managing to make a small opening within the actual dark matter blocking out the sun, they're able to collectively give the Blood Coven one hell of a sunburn, including their leader, Bloodstorm One, who during the battle we actually learn is a souped-up clone of Dracula himself. With that battle officially won, the Avengers team poses heroically in what little sunlight is left over before they too eventually make their way over to the Sanctum Sanctorum to hopefully try and find a magical cure for this vampire problem. And honestly, all of this might very well have worked, except for one minor problem that everyone seems to have overlooked, and that is Blade actually went to go see Miles first, and he got invited in with everyone else. Meaning that that while Bloodline is actually happy and excited to be reunited with a person who she befriended over in the Miles book, she along with everyone else is absolutely horrified to discover that Miles is actually a vampire sleeper agent. What's this gonna mean for the Miles Morales blood hunt tie-in? I don't know, but I do know I actually plan to cover that one, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled to the channel to find out. And so that was Blood Hunt issue number two, everybody, and once again, I thought this was a pretty damn fun, pretty damn exciting little event story. Nothing particularly special, nothing that knocked my 
my socks off, though to its credit, it actually did make me mildly interested to check out the dozen or so tie-ins that I can choose from over the last couple weeks. Again, I don't think I actually will. One of the big problems about reviewing comics for the channel is that it doesn't really leave me a lot of time between reading, writing, recording, and editing to actually chase down other books that I'm not actually having to read for work. Basically, my comic job keeps me away from my comic hobby, but again, I digress. To give the book credit, it actually did a good job selling all those titles, and if this event is going to be with us for that long, then I guess Blood Hunt is doing its job. Also, credit where credit is due for Jed McKay as well, with all of these brand new vampires he created in the Blood Coven. I know I had a moment there where it's like, man, I'm not going to be able to remember any of these characters' names, and thankfully he knocks off a few of them. Which should really make reading this series moving forward all that much simpler. Overall, I would give this one a very nice 7.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Cape Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye